Hey everybody, welcome to the Ultimate Booster Cone Showdown. And I have a selection of boosters here that have pretty much every type of cone, and I'll say that in quotations, I could think of. Starting here from the left, we have no cone, the capsule, the capsule with the uh, parachute on it, the old 1.3 or 1.4 style cone, the new 1.5 style cone, a couple variants of the fairings, a cone made out of aerodynamic fuselage, apparently, and also the booster cone with just the aerodynamic cone that it has at the top. And it also has the aerodynamic cone at the bottom, which is just a separate item, which is actually toggleable with the 1.3 old style nose cone. So the more you know. This guy here was done with part editor uh, that you can see up here. And I made a bunch of changes to make it wider and more thinner than it would normally be. But essentially it's the same as this guy down here, just stretched to see if that makes a big difference. And I know I did a short on this and people asked questions about it. But I just want to quickly show here that yes, I did actually go and add weighting underneath so that every single booster is the same mass. I've also gone and set it up to what I think should be from left to right from the least and most efficient booster setup. So let's find out how this is all going to go and if I was right and how more efficient the boosters are. So we're here on the launch pad and we want to see how these are going to go. Now, if you haven't had headphones on, you may want to turn the volume down because it's probably going to get very, very loud. And just so you can see here, I have everything staged. I'm going to start the ignition first. The boosters will not fire if they're covered. So I need to have all the docking ports fire first and the boosters go after. As far as I know, the timing between all this should be relatively instantaneous. So that shouldn't affect our results. Although I should include that booster in the actual launch or it'll sit there and not go anywhere. So without further ado, let's see which booster cone gives you the best aerodynamic features. At the end of the day, we ended up with almost three and a half thousand kilometers of elevation before the booster with the best result, which actually not that surprising was the fairing with the uh, modified top. The next best one was actually the two boosters. The difference between them was almost nothing. So that was an interesting result given that they both weigh exactly the same. Actually having it as two parts uh, made it slower than the single part unit right here. Um, so that's kind of a neat thing. In third place was actually the 1.3 cone. Um, that's kind of, again, a bit of a surprise, but okay. We switch down here. Here's the 1.5 cone, which oddly enough is less efficient than the 1.3. And yeah, I'm actually quite surprised by that. So. All the cones I've actually made are more efficient than the stock cone. But if we go down here, we can see here that this guy here is the smaller, not so uh, modified fairing. Definitely uh, did not do as well. And if you're wondering about the rest of them, well, they didn't even make it this high. They eventually actually came crashing to the ground as you saw at the start. So that's actually a very interesting result. But there's one more test I want to show before I let you go, which is I'm going to remove all the weighting because we weighted down these boosters uh, so they were all the same mass. Now we're just going to launch them without any additional mass. So now they have different masses based on what's on the top of them, etc. So this is going to definitely change the order and I think we're going to see some very different results.
there's a few things we realize as these rockets run out of fuel. And that is that at the top, unsurprisingly, we have the modified fairing capsule. Not too far away, we have the integrated booster from the pack. A little farther behind, we end up with the booster with the aerodynamic fairings. Surprisingly, this did a very good showing in this uh, version. And coming in last place of the top four, we have the non-integrated aero cone, where this is a separate piece on top of the booster. As you see here, a significant difference when we took out that weight. Another interesting side effect of this test is that you'll see here that the rockets end up veering off course. And this actually causes several of them to actually hit each other, uh, which is part of the reason why some of the rockets made it to space. And some of them obviously here went completely sideways. At the end of the day, the rocket that did the best was this guy right here with the fairing. So I hope you found this test super informative. And if you've spotted any errors, please let me know. I'm happy to always try to correct things, but... Ah!